Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Steven. And Kyle. And it's Monday. Hollow Cold. You know what that means. We're back with another banger. Banger in, banger out. It's what we do. It's what we do. We want to thank you for choosing us to kickstart your work week off. We're glad you're hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Again, thank you. Kyle's coming in with... I don't know what Kyle's coming in with today. Some interesting shiznit. Some interesting stuffs. That's coming up right after all of this housekeeping. So check us out at all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, Reddit. Search up the Hollow Sky Podcast and you will find us there. Join the community. Be part of the cult. It's what everybody wants to do. It's a fun thing. It's just all around a good time. So just do it. That's the that's the best cult uh, motto ever. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely you, not used anywhere else. No, no. That's ours. I, I just copyrighted it. Yeah. If you have a paranormal experience you'd like for us to feature on our Thursday show titled Listener Experience LE, Kyle's got some info for you. I do, and it's pretty simple, and you guys should know the deal by now. You either check the show notes or you just write your story out, shoot it over to the email, which is going to be hollowskypodcastgmail.com. And then it gets turned into a show, and you get to be a static. <laughs> um, they do. They do. So, yeah, if you'd like to support this show, we have a Patreon. You can go over there, and for a mere $7 a month, you can get extra shows, ad-free shows, early shows, casket breath stuff, all kinds of cool stuff. And it's 7 bucks. You can't even get... a Quarter pounder for that. Quarter pounder value meal. You get the hollow sky value meal for $7. So be sure to do that. If you order it through, if you order it through <laughs> Apple podcast before November, get grandfathered in because they're going to tax. They're going to put a new 30% tax on it. And nobody wants to pay 30% extra for anything. It's true. Cause that shit's dumb. You can go to hollow though. And you can find some cool merch, you get it, some t-shirts, some hats, some stickers, and Apple doesn't get 30% of that. Because fuck them. That's what I say. I agree. <laughs> but the best thing you can do, hands down, is share the show. Word of mouth. Share it. Put it out there. Share it on socials. Share, share it on, uh, I don't know, hire a plane and ride it in the sky. Do something. If I've got some QR code stickers, I'm going to put this out there. If you want to do some boots on the ground stuff, I'll send you 10 QR code stickers. You just got to DM one of us with your address and I'll pop them out there and you can just vandalize your whole town. Hell yeah. It's a cool thing to do. Uh, You can also leave us a five-star rating and review wherever you find podcasts. If I find it, I'll gladly shout you out if I find it. This week's five-star rating and review comes to us from our friend Jesse's Bear. Jesse says, Lazy. Five stars. Lazy. That's me when it comes to writing reviews. But I love you guys so much and will do whatever I can to help your podcast progress. I know I should join the club, but I'm a retired but working 70-year-old. There's only one show I contribute to, The Confessionals, and I believe that's where I found you. So when I find more money, you're next in line. Oh, and I'd love some ghost hunting. Signed, your friend, Margo. Margo, first off, thanks for taking the time to write us a review and leave us those kind words. I definitely fuck with the laziness. Yeah, we too are lazy. <laughs> so we get it. We get it. And we appreciate the sentiment yeah. of like supporting the show. You don't have to support the show monetarily. Like just being here, being part of the cult, sharing the show, putting our word out there. That's more support than we could ever ask. Absolutely. So don't stress out about it. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. So keep the five star ratings and reviews rolling in. Like I said, we're almost we're pushing a thousand. We're about thirty eight away. Keep them rolling. That being said, we're about to kick it off. Let's fucking go. Hit it. Let's go. So I'm gonna start this episode out with a great quote from me. Just from, do it from Steve. Just do it. Uh, out of this door might come something. Or we might send something through it. Those oh. are words which could be of possible jest. 
However, I don't think so. But those words come from the director for research and scientific computing at CERN. That's that's the last person on the planet that I want to hear say that shit. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Sergio. Man, Sergio. It's, it's like from the mist where they talk about opening, opening portals in that movie. And they're like, we just opened it to use it as a window so we could see into these other worlds. But sometimes that window's a door. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's Idiot. essentially what is happening here. But at the time this comment was made, you know, like I said, was it was it all in jest? Because people had already heard about CERN and what the plans were. Or was he serious about said intentions? That's kind of what we're going to be trying to sift through today when it, the episode is basically about portals being around CERN. Lots of uh, it's a little chaotic as usual in my writing uh, abilities. However, there is some pretty interesting information that we're going to get through today. Didn't they do like a mock human sacrifice? Yes. As we all know from the very moment of the war of of the I mean everybody knew when that happened that there was the mock sacrifice that's one of the like when you think of CERN that is one of the most iconic moments what a weird around thing CERN to like mock yeah you know, like I, not to mention it was in in front of Shiva yeah like is I I get being like tongue-in-cheek funny about stuff and like talking about i don't know whatever but the fact that that fell hand in hand with them opening portals stop oh dude if you think that's the the weirdest section you're about to get your mind fucked because it's open and ready it is way fucking weirder than i anticipated my mind i is think fully consenting dude I am like you and probably everybody else that think that was one of the strangest things surrounding CERN. Not even fucking close. Perfect. So CERN obviously is an acronym and its name was created in 1952 and it essentially stands for European Council for Nuclear Research. Now I know that doesn't do CERN. However, with different languages, they word their sentences is slightly different. So it's essentially... Council European Nuclear or Research of Nuclear, whatever. I think it's just stand for Stop Opening Portals Dummies. That, yeah, I'm I'm a hundred percent with that. <laughs> but uh, regardless, the name of the company actually changes later to European Organization for Nuclear Research, but the acronym actually never changes. The other one just doesn't have the same ring to it. Ur oh. Yeah. Well. Ironically enough, Werner Carl Heisenberg, a German physicist and the founder of quantum, he's labeled as the founder of quantum mechanics, also helped, was helping the Nazis in the race for the, the nuclear bomb. A lot of people were saying that he essentially held up the Nazi research in hopes that the Americans would beat them to the nuclear bomb. Mm. So I guess that somehow makes him a cool guy. But anyways, he ends up linking up with CERN. Sounds like a nerd. He is a nerd. He ends up linking up with CERN and insists that the name stays the same. He doesn't want a new acronym for CERN. That's weird. It's weird, right? Almost like, almost like there's, there's meaning, like meaning and intent and energy behind yeah. that name. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, we all know that the Nazis were into the occult. They were into UFOs. They were into all that shit. So that also raises a little bit of a red flag. Some people believe that Heisenberg knew what quantum physics implied for humanity. Some say it had a link to a proposed Babylon potential or secret knowledge essentially being linked to the Bible and how it, how it cites as the key to opening a gateway for the gods, the opening of Abzu or the door, the doorway to hell. It seems 
it all it all seems a bit much and confusing at the same time. But CERN can actually be linked to an ancient god called Cernunos, C E R N N U N O S. The name itself means horned one, and is usually seen with stag horns on its head. Sometimes seen with a ram-headed serpent. Sacrificing yourself to the horny god. Right? Cernos is the god of the underworld. He controls the shadows and is, is a dying-slash-rising god. Cernos alternates control of the world with the moon goddess Danu, which would be similar to the relationship of Shiva, Shiva and Kali. Shiva is the statue that welcomes visitors at Cern. The statue itself is in the Nataraha position, which is a cosmic dance that would destroy the old universe in favor of a new creation. Weird. Right? There's so many gods that I've never heard of. Yeah. It's hard to keep track of them all. It is. But interestingly enough, as I keep looking through all this shit, you have old petroglyphs that would depict spirals with horned humanoids around them. The spirals are typically seen as portals. Damn. So, from some people, it could be possible that CERN truly is trying to open a portal to the underworld and create a god gate serving as a doorway between two worlds. A, a god gate. A god gate is the word that they're using, which is very interesting. This is awesome. Right? I kind of fuck with Cernos. I'm looking through here. He's got antlers on his head. He's just kind of sitting out, hangs out with dogs and serpents and stuff. But he's usually shown holding a bag of money and a cornucopia. So he's got his, he's that got his bills and he's got his snacks and he's just hanging out with dogs and snakes. <laughs> doesn't seem like such a bad guy. No, no. Of all, of all the gods, he doesn't sound like that bad. Yeah. And... I know that all of this sounds a little fucked up and far-fetched, but the strange thing is, is like we go back to the, the eclipse and me and Steve were talking about it, how these crazy assholes sent rockets up during the eclipse. Well, what they called that, they called the, the, the APEP mission and APEP is an ancient deity who embodied darkness and disorder. Yeah. Why stop? Okay. So there's like three right there. That are in depiction of destruction, darkness, and all that. Somebody needs to get me the uh, email or the the name of the person that decides to name all this shit. <laughs> because we need to have a sit down and just just stop. Yep. Stop doing things in the name of entities that you don't know anything about. Oh, it keeps going. You have the then. Not to mention just everything that we've just gone through, but you also have the location of CERN. It's made up of four townships, apparently. St. Genus, uh, Poli, Pregan, and Flies. It's also next to the Yara Mountains and Lake Geneva. Yara means beast in Old Norse. And when you look at the connection with Cernos, who is also a beast god, hmm. Yara also means law, which can point to to Lady Justice that we see all over, essentially courthouses and stuff like that throughout the world, but it also links up with Athena. The description I found about this is is pretty legit. It's from a website called Skywatch TV. The Yara Mountains loom over CERN like ancient judges who oversee the construction and implementation of the new Babylon portal. It's gross. What? It's gross. Is there an old Babylon portal? I don't know, but we're kind of getting to it. It would insinuate that there is, if there's a new one. Oh uh, yeah, there is. It's uh, it's, it's weird. It's interesting. We'll get to it near the end of the episode, but it's all interesting. The town. Poily, P O U I L L Y which apparently was established by the Romans as Apocleum. They had a temple to Apollo there. Apollyon is listed in the book of Revelation as belonging to the king of the hybrid fallen angel creatures that rise up from the pit. Apollon, 
or Polyon or however you want to say it, is also referenced as Abaddon. Leaning a little more into the biblical text is that it was possible that the Tower of Babel was over the abyss. So in this, is this a recreation of the same scenario? Are our people, once again, looking into the subject matter too much? I am perplexed by all of it because we all got to sit here and admit it's a little fucking strange that they're naming things after gods of the underworld. And they're also building the look. It's in the location of Abaddon the Destroyer, which links up directly with Shiva the Destroyer and all these other gods throughout different religions that all share commonalities. Like they said, they even traced it. They even went as far as tracing Shiva back to Nimrod. Supposedly Nimrod turned into Shiva. Of course. Of course. It is fucking crazy. I don't even, I don't even know at this point. It is, it is weird. It's not even weird. It's not weird at this point. It's sus. Isn't it? And it's it's fucking crazy to me that these nerd fucking scientists are like, hey, I've got a really cool idea. I like Greek mythology. Let's name everything after gods of the dead and damnation and destruction. And they could have named it after gods of flowers and butterflies and bullshit. Fucking 100% and I, agree. And I would say, this is sus. I 100% agree. This is fucking sus. It's weird. Stop doing it. Not to mention that they even, later on we get into some of them, but bro, they even, they come up with fucking acronyms that match gods. Purposely. One of them's literally Satan. Yeah, well... I think I've heard that before. Yeah, and I, I have what they all mean, too. But back to the the location and so on and so forth, the bottomless pit is translated from the Greek word abyssos, which means shaft of the abyss, so a tunnel to the abyss. Tunnel could be translated to things like wormhole, mm. and a bottomless pit is used in describing black holes. And that was one of the worries when it, and CERN initially was created was that they would open a black hole and destroy the planet. I do remember that. Yeah. That was kind of a big deal. When they, they were, were like, kind of making us think about it. Yeah. I love that. They were just like, we don't know what's going to happen when we push this button. We're about to push this button. That's, that's exactly the way it played out Send too. It. It's exactly the way they played out. Uh, the CERN logo itself, as a lot of you know, is a combination of three sixes. Looking into this more, CERN is actually the birthplace of the World Wide Web. The Hebrew equivalent of our W is the letter VAV or WAW, however you want to say that, which has the numerical value of six. So WWW would be vav 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 or 666 which a lot of you are probably watching this on the world wide web so now you're part yes. of the um ritual yes congratulations the machine machine at cern has eight spokes or tubes that come from its center which would resemble the wheel of dharma also it does link later on to essentially portals as well. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Now that I'm kind of going back over this, it does translate into portals. Anyways, CERN calls this structure, this, this device or whatever Atlas, which as we know, has Greek ties is carrying the weight of the heavens. Even more unexplainable is the fact that they use bizarre acronyms. Satan, Solar Axion Telescopic Antenna, which later gets changed to Delphi, the detector with lepton, photon, and hydron indicator. Apparently, Delphi was a sanctuary of the god Apollo. One of the another acronym, Hades, high acceptance dielectric spectrometer. As if all of that isn't weird enough, on March 14th. 2015, 
CERN, this is fucking bizarre. I highly suggest everybody go watch this shit. March 14th, 2015, CERN releases a video that is called Symmetry. The video is of people inside CERN wearing blue hard hats and lab coats dancing. (laughs) It's it's literally like an orchestra, opera, Broadway-type thing. But the dance literally connects to Shiva out front doing her dance of rebirth. What is it called? I'm going to YouTube. I'm going to watch it with the sound off. Symmetry. This CERN releases a video called Symmetry. S Y M M E T R Y. This gives me anxiety. All you have to do is like watch. I all I did was watch a couple seconds of it, and I'm like, "What in the fuck is this?" Yeah, I feel that this is the most bizarre video that a place like CERN could put out. Are it, they like? It just, makes no sense. Are they just fucking with us? That's it right there. I'm gonna watch it with the sound off. It's bizarre. Stern symmetry. And no, I don't. I don't think they're just person. fucking with us. I really don't, because there's more evidence to conclude that it's not the case. It it's it's so mind blowing to me that scientists who are fucking with particles that could essentially destroy everything are also making dance battle videos. There's no way this is real. Dude, it's real. It says symmetrymovie.com. They're in they're in the fucking That's movie. what I'm saying. There's no way. And it shows people dancing and shit. It's fucking weird, dude. The dance of the cosmos, which is literally what Shiva is doing out front. This is making my brain hurt. It's bizarre. You know what? We but we, that a dance opera film inside the CERN Hadron Collider. Told you. Told you. We get the world we deserve. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. I'm but just we get what we deserve. It, it gets even weirder, right? The, then you have the the Gothard base tunnel in Switzerland that is in conjunction with CERN to some degree. This is essentially the world's largest railway tunnel, and it goes through this area that they call the Devil's Bridge. Of course it is. But on its opening day, another weird dancing video. While the, And this, apparently they spent millions of dollars on this one. It's hours and hours long. But while this video, while all this is going on, they have like screens in the background that are playing separate videos. You can literally watch videos of Shiva doing her dance, like an eight, an eight armed figure. It's, it's clearly Shiva doing her dance. Atlas coming up out of CERN. It also depicts Baphomet, who was killed, resurrected, and crowned king of the world. It, it shows other images such as the Eye of Providence, Lucifer, fallen angels, and much more. Well, as we talked about a little bit earlier on August 11th, 2016. That is when the human sacrifice ritual takes place, the mock human sacrifice ritual. And like I said, it's probably one of the most notable things out of CERN outside of their work. Uh, I wonder if that date had any, had any, any like uh, occult significance. I don't know. It it, odds are, I'd say, yeah. What is it? August 11th, August 11th, 2016. Hmm, Interesting. Interesting. I'm going to Google here. And then you have, June 24th, 2016, portal-shaped clouds appear over CERN, which 100% coincide with a an experiment that was taking place, and the experiment was named Awake. Hmm. Also fucking... And even at the bare minimum, bare minimum, how crazy would it be to be running experiments that legitimately affected the atmosphere directly you know what i mean like yeah, to create portal clouds what the fuck even if it was just clouds in in like a storm that just happened to pop up well, that's fucking crazy that it has the ability to affect our atmosphere that's nuts to me 
That is weird. And it shows that, like, in my head, I would be like, hey, we should maybe be a little bit more careful in dealing with this because we don't know what we're tampering with right now. Yeah. Why is it why is it charging our atmosphere? Why why is there shit happening? Yeah, at least like minimal, minimal there is fire to the smoke. Yeah. Whatever they're doing is causing something. Something. I found some things about the number eleven that I'm gonna go for here. it. The number eleven, which of course it was August eleventh when they did the human sacrifice yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, number 11 is often considered to have symbolic significance in the occult world for a few reasons. Uh, this is on uh, Cura.com. One, it's a prime number, which are sometimes seen as holding mystical or spiritual properties and occult beliefs. Prime numbers are seen as fundamental and indivisible, giving them a sense of purity. In numerology, 11 is considered a master number. Numbers like 11, 22, 33 are considered to hold greater spiritual power and potential than other numbers. 11 is associated with the intuition, insight, and higher consciousness. In some occult traditions, 11 is seen as a number of transition, duality, and spiritual enlightenment. That's Repre- ironic. It represents the bridge between the physical and the spiritual, combining the material and immaterial realms. There are 11 sephiroth or emanations in the, Kabbal- the Kabbalistic tree of life, which is the central mystical diagram in Jewish esoter- esotericism. esotericism. Wow, whatever that is. Nailed it. This makes 11 a significant number in the Kabbalah. In Thelemic Magic, founded by Aleister Crowley, the number 11 is sacred and represents the forces of creation and transformation. It is seen as a number of power, creativity, and a spiritual awakening. Which is 100% appropriate for Shiva doing that dance of, of creation. Yep. Associations with duality, transition, and elevated spiritual concepts contribute to the symbolic importance many occult belief systems and esoteric traditions hold in number 11 in. Hmm, I don't think it was just... Probably wasn't a coincidence. A coincidence. No. You also have uh, child prodigy Max Laughlin, who claims that CERN can and has pushed us into alternate timelines or a parallel parallel universe. And it could, and most likely is responsible for the Mandela effect. Mind you, this comes from a kid who was able to create a machine that generates free energy. So he's taken relatively serious in the scientific community. Trusted source. Kind of. Yeah. He's definitely smarter than I am. So in theory, I should probably listen to him. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely, yeah, he's definitely smarter than us. And, we could probably learn a thing or two from him. That's what I'm saying. He created free energy. I'm still paying four dollars a gallon for gas. Touche, touche. Uh, and when, and what's even crazier when it, in regards to like portals and stuff like that, we've heard from not just CERN, but f- far more accounts of scientists claiming that parallel universes actually exist. We've heard it scattered throughout the years. I remember seeing an article about where there was something going on in space and they thought it was from another universe bumping up against ours. There was a, an experiment ran in Antarctica where they think they have discovered, and Steve has talked to me about this before. I don't know if it's on the show or off the show, but they discovered that there could be a parallel universe where time runs backwards. Yeah, I did see that somewhere. Scientists at CERN have stated they believe that some of these experiments are going to prove parallel dimensions and what I don't know what this exactly means, oh but and strange matter. What the f- what? Like it? We uh, deal in strange matters here a lot at the Halls Guy. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. So I, think, comes- I think they're talking like physical strange matter. Oh, like things that we haven't ever seen before. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. It's crazy. It is fucking crazy. I found an article that suggests a video was posted where a vortex was forming over Geneva and that the media referred to it as a UFO gateway. There was this cloud vortex that had formed and three orbs were seen entering it. Now, 
controversial part is that later it was determined that it was nothing more than CGI. And this all, this whole thing took place in 2015. It's, you know, it's a little weird. We've, we've heard cases of, of these things happening. It's just, it, is it, is it a weather balloon story? Or was it was it really CGI? Oh, like they're like, hold up. Hold up. But it goes on. There was another account where a strange circle cloud formation was over Geneva, which exactly coincided with an emergency shutdown of the Large Hydron Collider. That is 100% true. And you can actually find pictures. The one I saw was in like a a radar style picture. And so you have like an overhead view of Geneva. And there is a clear cloud circle, a ring, all the way around Geneva. And they shut down the collider? It The, the collider was shut down. What? They, they had an emergency shutdown that day. Weird. And here's their explanation for the emergency shutdown. Apparently, a fucking weasel. Shut up. I swear to God. Apparently, a weasel hopped over a substation fence and bumped, they said, bumped a transformer, Shut knocking the power the out. Fuck up. 100% serious. And I, I wrote in here I don't build substations. However, I don't feel like a weasel's bump should be able to knock the power out. So. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here and say this is 100% accurate as to why they shut down that day. I don't believe it, but I'm going to pretend like I do. (laughs) So you motherfuckers are sitting here telling me that you have a machine that could possibly create a black hole that could end our universe solar system galaxy whatever the fuck and you can't even weasel proof it <laughs> it's so janky that things can just bump into stuff and it knocks it all wacko listen here i didn't think of, i didn't think about that either but that is a great fucking point listen the fuck here i don't get weasels in my goddamn house and i can't create a black hole like i've weasel proofed my home and you guys can't weasel proof yeah. the giant collider that could end all life everywhere. Yeah. Do better. And I could, I could understand if said weasel jumped on top of the transformer and created it, a connection for the electric electric current to pass through the weasel got shocked, died, whatever that makes sense. But from what I'm assuming is scientists or media people in direct contact with scientists, their verbiage was a weasel bumped the transformer and knocked the power out. How big was this fucking weasel? I don't know. It's probably the size of a fucking horse. It's probably an interdimensional weasel. Probably. I would, you know what? I would buy that more so than it being a regular weasel. Yeah. If it was a weasel from another realm, I'll give you that. We don't know what <laughs> weasels from alternate dimensions are made of. We don't know like how much mass they have. We don't know. It's true. Like we're, we're putting it into terms of uh, earth weasels. If it yeah. was a alternate dimension weasel, I'll give you that. But yeah. it doesn't sound like it is. No. Just no. shut up. Another, here's another one that kind of, you're not going to believe. In 2009, an Airbus A330-300 allegedly vanished temporarily. The plane was carrying 170 passengers and was heading towards Santa Cruz, Bolivia, and seemed to all of a sudden disappear mid-flight. The plane then was reported to appear roughly 5,500 miles away around the Canary Islands. What? Yeah. Yeah. Some people suggest that CERN created some type of time warp. And when they realized this, they shut it down. <laughs> Whoops. But the official story was that the shutdown was caused by a bird that dropped a bit of baguette, baguette, whatever, the, essentially a piece from a loaf of bread. 
causing the magnets to heat up and almost cause another quote unquote quench event. Prior to 2009, the Large Hadron Collider was temporarily out of commission due to a malfunction dubbed the quench, inc- quench incident, which occurred in 2008. And this happened due to liquid helium venting into the tunnel, damaging rough, about 53 superconducting magnets. Okay, I, be- I believe that. I was just getting ready to say that. That one sounds good. Yeah. yeah. That one sounds that one's just sciencey enough for me to be like, all right, that sounds like it could cause a problem. Yep. We're going to go with that. You're going to tell me a fucking bird dropped a piece of French bread <laughs> in, in, into whatever. Yeah. And and that... Somehow got underground. Oh, uh, yeah, because that's where birds in, live. Into the large hydron collider. And it just so happened to coincide with the time you accidentally portaled a plane halfway around the world. Yep. I hate it here. Yep. These official stories are pretty rad, huh? They're good. I mean, the biggest threat we have right now are not interdimensional beings. It's not black holes. It's not uh, nuclear war. It's not famine. It's not plagues. It's clearly the rodents around the collider. Yep. 100%. You probably can't drive an armored truck into the collider, but the birds and the weasels can snack in the collider. Yeah. And what's crazy is that they're trying to make a, a new collider that absolutely ridiculously I saw the, I saw dwarfs the, the one they already have. I saw it is how big it is. Crazy how much bigger it is. I love that that's that's what that's what we do now. We're like, hey we tried this one yeah. and it didn't explode or it didn't kill us. Yeah. Let's make a bigger one. And it's not even just like a little bit bigger. It's probably not- 10 times the size of the one they have. Yeah. At least it is fucking nuts. But when they, I saw that. I was like, what? Why? In regards to the, uh, the time warp they're they're saying that what happened was the time warp was created by causing distortion in Earth's magnetic field, that would then create a time wave that reverberated through the planet's core. The wave also uh, ends up passing through the gate of the sun in ancient megalithic stone arch in Bolivia. So I'm assuming in theory that whatever this reverberation was may have passed through this ancient megalithic structure, which we've heard that some of these star or these stone arches are actually stargates. So maybe that's what happened. I don't know. That's. I don't know. But I'm looking at this picture of how big that. It's nuts. That's the one I saw. It's fucking crazy. The F the future circular collider. It is crazy. It is. It is. So. For perspective, the people that aren't looking at this picture, the Large Hadron Collider has a diameter of 27 kilometers, right? Mm-hmm. So this new one, 100 kilometers. Yes, yeah, it's significantly bigger. 100 kilometer diameter, CERN backs new 62 mile particle accelerator. It's crazy. What's the price tag? 19 billion uh Switzerland dollars <laughs> looks like kind of a E kind of an L euros. Maybe yeah, it's whatever it is. I like Switzerland dollars. Yeah. I'm not a moneyologist. Some Swiss bucks, <laughs> some swucks. <laughs> uh, but that's not even my favorite part of all this. Just cause you can science doesn't mean you have to science. That's what I'm saying. Dude. Right. It is so bad, but here comes my favorite part. <laughs> A so, flying trapeze artist yeah. dropped Keep going. a 10-piece nugget into a portal, which shot back to CERN, which essentially stopped all life on the planet yep. as we know it. That's what happened in 2012. Solved it. He did. Solved it. Nailed it. Strange matters solved here. Hell yes. So... 
there are people out there that are saying CERN is actually attempting to access the wormhole that existed during the Saturn polar configuration. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. As it's explained in a Twitter article from Nick Hinton, the wormhole that they're referencing has been dubbed the Saturn Stargate. It's always fucking Saturn. Dude, it's crazy. So the Saturn Stargate is a theoretical celestial alignment based on the electric universe theory that supposedly causes a portal in the open or portal to open in the sky in the tech bubble article, how CERN plan to use the large hydron collider to open portals to other dimensions. Researcher Adam Milton Barker speculates that CERN's goal is to access the Saturn polar configuration, saying there are some very interesting theories connected to CERN. One theory is that there is a connection between CERN and Saturn. You may have heard of Jacob's Ladder, which is described in the book of Genesis. One of CERN's goals is to recreate Jacob's Ladder and reopen a portal that is said to have existed between Earth, Venus, Mars, and Saturn. When the planets were in alignment many of thousands of years ago, um, Talbot associates this alignment with the Tower of Babel. Various researchers have suggested that CERN is, is attempting to recreate the Tower of Babel, and some have speculated that the Tower of Babel was actually a wormhole. The Saturn polar configuration was also represented by Atlas. Atlas, as we talked about earlier, bared the weight of the heavens on his shoulders. And curiously enough, CERN refers to the Large Hydron Collider as the Atlas experiment. Weird. Which, once again, would connect him to the power Tower of Babel. You also have a Dr. Stuckelberger who says <laughs> it's a good name. Hold on. It's a good name. Just let that sink in for I everyone. Know. I knew that I was going to get Dr. Stuckelberger. Stuckelberger. It's a good one. Note what he says here. Yeah. She actually. Note what she says here. She says that CERN is dealing with radionuclear research. She claims that a few of the scientists at CERN have told her there are 100% beings coming from portals at CERN. They're coming in and out. And they were saying to her that, that they have things. direct, they have, they have absolute evidence that people are dealing with the Higgs boson at, at a subatomic level. And apparently at the bottom of CERN, there's a portal and that they are dealing with subatomic dimensions. The physicists say that there are 17 different dimensions of reality, and some are even suggesting more. We know space time, the three dimensional dimensions, X, Y, and Z as, as put out on a graph, but there are more that we are playing with. These, these beings that came out, there were two of them, had come out and they had the, the the scientists supposedly have proof of this because these beings left behind tissue samples and they weren't fucking human. What? Just just saying, just hearing in my brain mm -hmm. that there are entities coming through these portals made me feel gross. Mm -hmm. A and B, what? In the hell is a subatomic universe? I don't fucking know. It doesn't sound like it's something we should probably play with. No, it sounds dumb. Yeah. Um, Shut the door already. There was another bit of information that was found, although it can't exactly be confirmed if it's true or not. But it does line up with what Dr. Stuckelberger was saying on March 22, 2019. Apparently, there was a small error in the Large Hydron Collider startup code. To in, in it, whatever happened, there was this unusual yellow light filling the facility. The team noticed a dark, otherworldly orb that quickly appears. Other experiments with similar orbs lead to what is considered dangerous results. A metal pin tested in one of the voids showed extremely high radiation supposedly killing 10 researchers. Oh. Drones that were sent into the void lost connection instantly. 
in a recent test, instead of the expected light, a large black figure emerged from the void and communicated. It was a massive featureless entity with strong vibrations. All the researchers heard it speak in their heads. You creatures have no place peering into our world. Your destruction was determined the moment you opened the door to ours. Your knowledge of us, of our existence, threatens us. Like I said, we get the world we deserve. We were just asking for it. I actually found, ironically enough to this, and I, I kind of assumed it was a creepypasta or a just a well-written story. But I did find an article a, a while back that I was going to do um, a Patreon episode on because of the way it's it's worded. I feel like it's just a story, the way that it's written. But in a similar manner in the story, they're working on shit at CERN. There's something happens, and essentially you have a woman that is there and she vanishes. And what's crazy is that her physical body vanishes. Everything that she was wearing or that is not a part of her physical body was left behind. Rings, jewelry, clothes. That's weird. They even go on to say that her tampon stayed behind. Well, I can see that being a problem. Now, once again, it reads like a story. It reads like a written story. So I'm not saying that that is 100% true. But it is weird in conjunction with what we just talked about, about this being that comes through. Uh, We also talked about earlier about the 2012 CERN and the Mandela effect. Me and Steve have talked about that before, but I found another theory or suggestion, whatever way that you would like to phrase this. In 2012, scientists at CERN were trying to study the Higgs boson. Something goes wrong, causing a rift in the space-time continuum, destroying our universe and moving us into a parallel one. In this new universe, it actually belongs to what they are considering an unknown entity. And there, the thought process behind it is that said entity is is what is actually causing the Mandela effect and other paranormal activity. CERN used quantum entanglement to bridge the gap between the two universes and move us into the new one. It is believed that the unknown entity is manipulating the universe to study its effects. See, this is why I am one hundred percent choosing violence when it comes to not humans. It's crazy. Because they're sus, A. B, they're all up to no good. Nobody's going to convince me otherwise. Period. Hands down. And C, four. They're stupid. And they piss me off. Because they're always doing some manipulative bullshit and just, just we're gonna do this to see what the you what happens to the humans. We're gonna do this to see how the humans react. Why don't you just stop? Yeah, how about we don't do that? Yeah, but I mean, look, I look at us. We're we're already creating colliders and shit, and yeah. fucking up our own shit. Like we can do it on our own. This we're fully true. capable of ruining our own shit. I've seen us do it. I have proof. We don't need you behind the scenes, behind the universe scenes, pulling the strings like some sort of intergalactic Wizard of Oz horse shit. Just stop it. I agree. The end. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, weird that it... So you remember when we went to Fortian, right? And yeah. we did the episode on yep. the Khosrev mirrors? Yep. It, it, it is almost like the scientific version of the Khosrev mirrors. I feel the same way. Like when I, when I read the part where that um, entity came through and basically told him you're fucked, I instantly thought of the mirrors. Yeah. Instantly and thought. Manifesting the weird UFOs over top of it. Yeah. 
I'm thinking about just doing an episode on that on here. Like it's been Should. a year. We the people who went to Porty and got the digestive for a year. We're about to. I'm about to send it. Should it was a good episode. It's it feels like exactly the yeah. same results, but only uh, exponentially larger. Like I feel like the Kozarev mirror is like a personal. It's a poor man's version. Yeah, or, or it's more personal. Like like they're doing shit that's affecting the entire world. <laughs> Kozarev mirror just kind of affecting yourself, right? Which yeah, you can buy some here. I found a uh, Kozarev mirrors. For sale. Let's do it. I wonder how much they cost. Probably too much, but let's do it. Uh, that'd be fine. Um, beyond all of what we just talked about, I I did find some pretty interesting information as I began to look into, of course I did, the Saturn Stargate. So That's also weird. Yeah. So throughout ancient civilizations, there was a symbol of a keyhole. And this symbol is cross-cultural. It occurs in many ancient civilizations that had no contact with each other, nor did they use keyholes. It suggested through others' research that there was a celestial configuration of planets that occurred thousands of years ago, recorded by the ancients, and these planets created a keyhole shape in the heavens accompanied by an eight-pointed star. These planets were Saturn, Venus, and Mars. The keyhole symbol is also a Freemason symbol. This this Saturn configuration is linked to the Tower of Babel. The Gateway of God was symbolized as an eight-pointed star, which, if you remember earlier in the episode, we talked about the Hydron Collider having eight, eight, uh, what, what, uh, whatever in them. (laughs) Hydroners. Yeah. What's even weirder is that this is lore that seems to have deep ties because movies actually portray this connection. In Avengers, there's an eight-spoked wheel that allows for interdimensional travel. Lego Dimensions, eight-spoked wheel allows for interdimensional travel. Event Horizon, interdimensional black hole portal, is briefly with or briefly portrayed with an eight-pointed star. TV show Rewind, eight-pointed portal is used to travel interdimensionally. Lost, eight-spoked wheel is used to travel interdimensionally. Then, this is a fucking great connection. (laughs) Then you have the movie Stargate, in that they are attempting to portal to a deity named Ra. Ra, Mm. Ra is identified as whom? Saturn. Sus. Saturn. Which that is not in the movie. That is just research that was done. That's a hundred percent. That's on par. I didn't trust Ra from the get go. Yeah, it's fucking weird, right? I didn't trust him. I didn't trust him from day one. Then, Ten toes down. I was like, this dude is sus. Yep. Then you see images all over that have a pyramid or what they could be calling a cosmic. I think it was the cosmic mountain. But you have a pyramid with an eight pointed star behind it. And if you think about it and look at it. That actually looks like a keyhole, especially this one right here, Steve. The eight-pointed star. Yeah, it does look like a keyhole. With the the pyramid or mountain underneath it. 100% like it a looks keyhole. Looks like an old-school keyhole, doesn't it? And what's the name of that book? The Saturn Myth. Hmm, weird. By David N. Talbot. Weird. But those are still in conjunction with one another, even out of conjunction with one another. Yeah. Then you even have the Freemason logo aligned with the configuration of Saturn, Venus, and the Cosmic Mountain. The circle of the apex is the blazing star or Venus, and the triangular appearance of the compass itself represents the Cosmic Mountain Way or Pathway. And if you think about it, I mean, it it has the same keyhole effect, the whole nine. Yeah. They even say the tale of Gilgamesh links back to portals and Saturn. Um, a lot of people that I was reading are saying that the hexagon shape on Saturn is from dimension forces, that it is a gravitationally stabilized wormhole. It's caused by hyperdimensional physics, and the hexagon goes would essentially go down to the core of Saturn and is caused by energy from another dimension. Adam Milton Barker speculates that CERN's goal is to open the portal to Saturn, which, like we talked about earlier, 
to re- recreate the Jacob's Ladder, open a celestial portal to Saturn. And as I'm kind of finishing up my research here, because I'm getting close to time for me to leave, to come over to Steve's house, I'm like, all right, well, like, what the fuck comes out of this ancient Saturn portal? Like, what what is it all about? And the only thing that I can get that I, in, the, in the short amount of time that I had was another connection that the portal in Interstellar was actually placed next to Saturn. Oh, that's weird. Which is another weird movie connection. But think about how deeply rooted that is to where all these movies and, and TV shows are using the reference of the eight-pointed wheel or star in conjunction with interdimensional time travel. Yeah, and they usually put it out there to the public in ways that are easily consumable by the public exactly without ever having to without ever having to actually like put exactly. it out there that's weird and it's it's just weird like you you like in the law of one we talked about this the the council of saturn um then you have the the grimoire that we did with saturn it's just and it's weird so fucking weird to know like it the more i the dig around and the more i learn it, it really does fucking seem that there are a lot of people on the planet that still worship saturn yeah i wonder how many of them do it consciously i think there's i think there's a larger amount than we realize if because if they're using all this symbology linked to saturn and they're hiding in it in little weird ways to me that shows a level of understanding yeah. It's not just a random point that you just pick out for no reason. I did hear that there was a theory that they created the collider with full knowledge knowing that it would pop us into new dimensions every time they fired it up. Because in our OG timeline, we were being chased by something that wanted to destroy the planet or the human race. So we're getting chased in this time and every Which time. Which kind of if, links up to what I talked about earlier about the big entity coming through. Yeah. Every time we fire it, we skip to a new timeline, essentially giving us some time to escape this thing. Then it's got to figure out how to get back to us. So that's also kind of leads to like collective quantum immortality because every so that first timeline, once we popped, whatever the fuck that was got to us and finished us off. Oh yeah. So then we pop to this new one and we're continuing. Which, uh, whatever this thing is, will notice and come after us again. Which is disgusting. If you think it sucks. It It fucking sucks. I think, I think without question, those motherfuckers know that it's at least a relative possibility to open portals. Oh, yeah. It's also crazy to me. I think, I think one of the, and to me, that's not even crazy. It is not crazy for science to want to try to prove other dimensions and shit like that. That's not that's not crazy to me. What's fucking crazy to me is that everything surrounding CERN has a malevolent, almost satanic gesture behind it. Everything. The logo, Shiva. The the location that it was fucking built in is sus. It is everything points to sus. bad juju. Everything. And to me, that's fucking crazy. That is crazy to me that what should be impartial scientists seemingly having an opinion on religion to a, to a, a, a whatever degree. And they're you they they're a hundred percent playing into old mythology. I mean, what could argue would be argue Satanism? It's the the resurrection, the end times. I mean, you're, it's like you're ushering it in. It's fucking crazy to me. And I, I and I'm sorry. I don't I don't think this is a case of well, these scientists just have a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm, I don't think that's the case. And then they purposely 
come up with these fucking acronyms like they do Hades and Satan and yeah, like come on, what are we what are we do at this point? So I said, stop. Whoever's naming this, stop. A, you're being sus. And B, also stop because that's stupid. And I, I just, I don't know. I just, I just think it's, I think it's real. I think that they're they knowingly are doing this shit. It's just crazy to me that they it would it would take such a dark path. Because, like I said, it is it not is it is not fucking far fetched to hear about scientists wanting to open fucking create a black hole. Like yeah. if they were like, yeah, we're going to create a black hole. I'd go, that sounds about right. Yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that's intelligent or that you should do that, but I could definitely see scientists doing that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just you know. because just, just in, for the name, in, in, the, in the, the name, name of, science. of science, baby. Well, good news is we have a particle accelerator from CERN right here in Illinois. Lucky for us. Really? Yep. Fermi lab in Batavia, Illinois, four hours and 24 minutes away. I assume up by Chi town. Yeah. Up by Aurora Borealis. But look at this sus ass staircase. I'm Google mapping this place. Looks like a DNA. Thing. Looks like a DNA strand. The helix or whatever. Completely unnecessary staircase. Yeah. Here. It, yeah. It looks just like the, the DNA strand. How crazy is that? Weird auditorium and shit. But that I thought is weird. And unnecessary. Yeah. But you also zoom out. You can see the actual. Oh, yeah. And the water to try to keep it cool. Yeah, that's crazy. I did, I did not know that. And it's, and now they're saying. The Fermi Lab. Uh, tons of nations across the planet are trying to build them. Yeah, because they're going to create one giant wormhole portal. to yeah. Black hole is straight to hell. But isn't that. I mean, I, I guess to a degree I get it. But isn't it crazy that, like now all of a sudden, yeah, look at all that. The, yeah, it's even on the map there. Um, now all these different countries are trying to build their own. Yeah, they want the fastest portal. I don't know. It's it's fucking wild to me. It's wild, and I know there's. I mean, there's been con there uh, controversy around CERN. I mean, I'm, I've even seen. I don't. I don't remember if it was video or not, but I've seen cases where they claim they saw demonic figures coming out of the skies around CERN. Yeah, that's weird. And it's just, it's, I don't know. I, 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 it's just, it's fucked. I'm curious about the entities that they, that came out from, the the basement. Or oh, I am too. I wish I wish they gave more of a description or more of a story behind it, but that's all I could find. Damn, it's it's fucking wild though, and it's but it's not surprising if you're playing with what essentially is other dimensions, like you were saying about the mist, man. We were just trying to look in. Yeah, and these things are like, oh shit, watch this. Guess what else you can do? We're gonna come on through. Which sucks. It does suck. But hey, in the name of science. In the name of, they have the Fermi Lab Village, where I guess the scientists just live. I believe that. I believe that. They're doing important work, man. They're doing something. We got to be opening these portals. This thing's just called Site 58. They don't even let you do anything with it. It's just a picture of a cage. Cool. Like, what? That's where I'm trying to go. Site 58. Can you imagine a black hole just opening up? Yeah, look at that. That's right in the I middle. I mean, that would that would do us a solid with Shy Town. Look at where nothing is built around it. It's just like it's it's that is crazy. Giant. Yeah. And there's nothing it is built nuts around that. There's nothing bitch. built around it. That's nuts. Oops. Oh, now I'm over here at the self defense place, but cool. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that's about all I got for it. Well, I hate it. It's, Not the episode. It's fucking weird, but man. But the context of the episode. The it's, it's crazy to find so much shit linked to Saturn. That is going to blow my it mind. Just, it does keep popping out, doesn't it? It does, and it's really fucking bizarre. I don't like it. I don't like it. 
It's bizarre. He's been worshipped on this planet for a long time. That doesn't mean he's not a nerd. No, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. That's what CERN stands for. Stop creating portals, nerds. I like it. Quote me on that. I like it. But yeah, that wraps it up. I don't even know how to feel about it because we're probably in a black hole right now. And we just don't know it. I, I agree with that. So, in this timeline, check out all our socials. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, Reddit. Search up This Timeline's Hollow Sky Podcast and you can come and be part of This Timeline's Hollow Cult. It's a good time. So until we meet again, stay safe, stay weird, and thanks, CERN, for giving us the world we deserve. <laughs>